that, they've got these tray areas. I've got a couple of collets set up. In contrast, we've got an R8 off the bridge port that you can look at and some of the C5s, the 5Cs. Same type of thing with our precision tools. If you're going to use it, wipe it off. They come in all the different sizes that you may need. So check on that. We have some of our larger chucks. We have a face plate on lathe one that you'll be using. On this one, we have a three jaw already set up. I've got a sample piece on the lathe. If you want to use a lathe and you want to check to see if that three jaw is accurate, Put a piece of scrap steel in there, some type of rod, and put a dial indicator on it. And when you spin it, if that chuck is true, that little needle won't go anywhere. And there's actually a way, if you look at these chucks, they have some set screws in them. You can loosen the chuck up a little bit and actually shift it to be concentric with the spindle. So you get it to perfect, the more, the more better. No. The higher the quality, the work you can produce. This one, I've got the piece in there, it's set up. We've already got our parts figured out to some degree. Headstock over here, tailstock. Tailstack has a, they call it a spindle, they call it a quill. I think officially it's a quill. It moves in and out, just like the quill on our bridge ports. Centers. This is a tailstock center with a very blunt point. In this case, if I had a piece of pipe that I wanted to put on the lathe, this would hold it on center. I have a smaller one there right now. And on most of the lathes, we have one. There's a tailstock center. You have a piece like this one that you need to center up, and you're going to do it with your spindle. You start by putting the spindle in the chuck very close so just a little bit sticks out and now we're going to drill a center hole this piece has a center hole in it for manufacturing but they made it that center hole <coughs> jacob's chuck tailstock how many people have ever seen a center drill before good thing that's a center drill we use it for all kinds of stuff. It's very short, it's very stout, it doesn't wander. You want to mark a hole on a piece on the drill press or in the mill, this is a good way to start. It was made specifically for this job on the lathe. That has a 60 degree taper, I believe. This has a 60 degree taper. You put the hole in the end of your work, this will hold it. Just like we talked about for doing long gun barrels. That piece has one in it already. They do have two different types of tailstock centers. But you know what they are. This one has a bearing in it. And it's called a live center. So when the work turns, this center turns. Works great. Before they invented that, they had a dead center. It was just a solid piece of steel with that taper on it taper in the back. It did not spin. You had to grease it or oil it. And what happened was people would forget that and they would friction weld their part to the center. So these things that are dead centers are pretty well chewed up. Live center is a nice way to go. If you get anything of any length on here, you want to use a center. Anything of any weight, you want to use a center. You don't want a big old piece. This thing's probably 20, 30 pounds. We don't want to spin that and have it come off and hit somebody. So you support it. Okay, firing up our machine. You can look at the ones behind me. Somebody sort of take charge of your, your control panel there and your gearbox because we can start all three of these lathes and you can sort of look on as I talk you through it. Right. On our gearbox, we have our chart, we have our gear controls, we have our red button. Red buttons are our stop buttons. Start this machine, you pull the one red one out a little bit. So go ahead and pull that out. If you're gentle, it'll pull out and it'll stay out. Okay, right beside that is a white button. The one on number two, yeah, that's the one. The little white cap is missing there. But you push the white button in, 
And your motor lights up. Go ahead and start her up. Right. Now, you do want to know that you're in a speed of some kind. Just like you can be in neutral in a car with a stick shift, you want this spindle to be geared into a position. So look at our color knobs there, up at the top. To get into a gear, you have to line up your colors. So I'm moving the ring with the numbers on it, and I'm jiggling my spindle at the same time. And I'm lining up right now, I got 260 and 350 and 470, etc. Then I move the center knob until all my colors line up. You might need to jiggle your spindle to do this. Cars now with a manual transmission, they have synchronizers. They help them slip together. This doesn't. That's why you need to move your spindle some. So you get all your colors. The color on the outside of the dial, the color on the numbers, color on the center lined up, and that tells you what your speed is. Once you've got that, our clutch lever, right at our carry, you've got the red knob on yours, you've got yours, it's out, and gently down.
22 and a half degrees or something, I don't know what it is. But you can do that. This one, my compound, will do short ones. Taper attachment across the back, and I can adjust that to cut tapers. And if I want to do a long taper, I can actually take my tailstock center, my tailstock itself, and shift it off center. And that will cause me to cut a taper on the long rod. All right. This one, I want to take a very light pass. I'll show you what our turning the diameter is like. Our facing. I've already done on this machine. That looks like this. That was a facing cut. Now, something I never want to see is you leave your chuck key in the chuck. All right? That's the way it gets thrown across the room or even busted. All right? I had to recut the square end on one of these things. Somebody left it in there, turned it on, and it came around and hit the bed so hard it broke that little thing off. I'm not worried about breaking it off so much as having this thing go through your face. All right? I can fix this. I can't fix your fix. So if you're done here, put it down. Okay, so facing example, turning the diameter example. When we're doing spindles, lathe two and lathe five have collets in them. If you want some real accuracy, you use those. A little bit of turning. We didn't talk about cutting tools yet for these machines. They have high speed steel cutting tools, they have carbide. Most of what we're using are the carbides. We talk about comparison of those two. Carbide. That's no. A little bit. Carbides are good for heat, right? Remember hearing that? High speed steel holds up against impact, but does not do well against heat. Most of what we're doing here is with carbides, so we can run a higher speed and not damage. Speed on that 840 is a little slow, we can run it definitely faster. 